You are going to be making a SketchUp version of the clock that you will be building in the production lab. To do this, you're going to be using SketchUp, but I'm going to start by showing you exactly what I'm talking about that you're going to be making. You're going to have a SketchUp version of your clock. Now one of the things I'm going to show you as we go through is your clock face may be square, it could be round, it could be angled. You're going to choose from those three. It does not have to have the charging station on the right on every one. When you make yours, you can decide where you want that. We'll go over that as we go to build them. But we're going to be going in and we're going to be making a SketchUp version of your clock. So that way you can see exactly how you want it and make your decisions before you go to build it. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by opening up SketchUp. To do this, you're going to go ahead and double click on the icon that's on your desktop and it'll open up a new SketchUp window. You are going to start by saving it as your first and last name. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go File, Save As, and you're going to choose this PC, Tech Drop. You're going to go to whichever class period you're in. For this example, I'm going to use period four. And you're going to go to whatever rotation you're in. I'm going to choose rotation four. And I'm going to go to SketchUp Clock. And as I said, you're going to go ahead and save it as your first and last name. And you're going to hit Save. Now, the important step here is you're going to need to have one open and saved for your partner as well. So what you're going to end up having to do is you're going to go File, Save As, and this time you're going to give it your partner's first and last name. And my partner's first name is Billy, and their last name is Bob. And I'm going to hit Save. Now you'll notice that's going to change the name of the one that's open to my partner's. I have to go ahead and open mine then. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and click on this folder down here at the bottom. And I'm going to go to the tech drop. And I'm going to go to the location I saved it. So I'm going to go to my class period, whatever one that would be. Whatever rotation you're in. Sketch up clock. And I'm going to open up the other one that says first and last name. Now I would ask you, simply choose sketch up and hit OK. Now you're going to notice you now have two drawings open. I have my third because I have the example one I'm showing you, but you now have your first and last name and your partner's first and last name. You're going to take turns drawing your clock. And so you're going to both draw your entire clock at the same time. So one person's going to draw the step they see in the video, then the other person's going to draw the step they see in the video. Now, to save time in my instructions, so you don't have to watch it twice, I'm going to demonstrate once, but you'll see it magically kind of appear on the other person's drawing. You're going to go ahead and you're going to both draw at the same time. So as you're watching the video, you'll pause. One person will draw that step, go to the other person's, they'll draw that step. So I'm going to start with the first person, and that was my first and last name. And we're going to start by drawing a rectangle. When we draw that rectangle, we're going to come down in here to do this. But before we get started on that rectangle, you might need to get your toolbars loaded. And what happens is sometimes somebody accidentally grabs this and they have it out here, or they delete it, they get rid of it, whatever it might be. If you don't have the toolbar off to the side, to get it back, all you have to do is go to View, Toolbars, Large Tool Set should have a check, and Getting Started should have a check. Now, if someone accidentally floated the toolbar out here, all you have to do to snap it back in is move it over here to the middle and it will snap back in place. But before you begin, you should have getting started checked, checked and large tool set checked. But we're going to draw a rectangle right down here. And to do that, we need to pay attention to the blue axis, the green axis, and the red axis as we're building. So I'm going to start by grabbing the rectangle command, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click one time. And I drag my mouse over to the right. And I am going to type in 12, 5.5 and hit enter. And when I do it, it makes a rectangle right down here. 
And I would simply go ahead and I can say zoom extents and it'll zoom me in on that rectangle. So that's all I see. Now, sometimes you might need to zoom in or out. To do that, you can use your mouse to zoom out, zoom in, that's using the scroll wheel. I can also hold down on the scroll wheel and it lets me orbit. But once again, sometimes I might need to zoom in on everything, I just click zoom extents. I can also grab the hand and I can move my piece around to where I want it. I'm gonna go back to my arrow though. And as I said, I'm gonna demonstrate this first one but then the rest, I'm just going to show on just the first and last name, and the other person would go and do theirs. But so I drew this square or rectangle at 12,5.5. So your partner would go to their drawing. They would take control of the mouse and the keyboard, and they would type 12,5.5 and hit enter. And then they could also do zoom extents and then scroll out a little bit. So I now have one for mine, one for my partners, right? So I have mine and my partners. I'm going back to first and last name, and we're gonna continue drawing. Now, over here on the left, if you ever wanna see the name, you just kinda of move your mouse and let it pause. We're gonna grab what's called the push-pull, and that allows me to create three Ds. I'm gonna click on it. I come out here and I click one time, move it up, and you can see it's letting me stretch that taller, shorter. And you can see the dimensions are right down here, or distance is right down here in the corner. And I'm going to type in 3 slash 4 and hit enter to make it 3 fourths of an inch. Now once again, your partner would go ahead and do that for theirs as well. Now, my next step is going to be to come in and create a bevel all the way along the edge that we're going to end up making with a machine called a router. To do that, I need to draw on this corner. So I'm gonna orbit. Once again, I'm using the scroll wheel. I just simply push down on it and I'm gonna orbit and then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit down to this corner, what would be this right corner right here. I'm then gonna grab the line command and I'm gonna to come to where it says endpoint and it's gonna say on edge and I'm gonna type three slash eight and hit enter. You'll notice I now have a little line right here and there's an endpoint to it. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that endpoint, and I'm going to come down to midpoint. And I'm going to make a little triangle right down here on this corner. I then want to come over and I want to grab this thing that says follow me. And it's going to let me make a bevel all the way around this top edge. To do it though, I need to make sure I follow the line all the way along the edge, come back down along this side, and then when I come down along this line in the front, the key to making it work is I need to stay above that triangle. If I go below, it's going to create this funky shape. And you're going to ask for help when, in fact, all you need to do is undo it and make sure you stay above the line. So I'm going to come in and I click once, holding the mouse down. So I'm clicking, the, clicking and holding. I come down around the top. Once again, I stay above that line. I come over to this corner and I let go and I create a beveled edge. I then can go ahead and kind of zoom back around and I can see that it's a nice clean beveled edge all the way around. Once again, I would trade places with my partner and let them draw theirs. Now, we have our base drawn for both myself and my partner, right? So I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to work on drawing my clock face. We're going to end up drawing three clock faces though and we'll decide which one we want to use. The reason we're going to draw all three is I want to make sure you know how to draw all three and then you can have those three to choose from. And once again one partner is going to draw their three and then the other partner will draw their three. But I'm going to start by moving my face a little bit over and I'm going to kind of come over to this left side and I'm going to draw my clock faces. To do this I'm going to grab the rectangle command and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click once over by this green line. And I'm going to kind of move it back into the right and I'm going to type in 5.5 comma 3 slash 4 and hit enter. And it's going to make a rectangle. Now, I need to make one here and I need to make one here. All I'm going to simply do is I want three of them total. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab this one. 
by using my arrow and I simply go to the right of it and I click so it stashes and I put it all in the bubble. I grab it, I go ahead and I say edit, copy, edit, paste. And then I can come over here to endpoint and then I can move along the red axis and I can put another one right over here and can say edit, paste. I can go to this endpoint, drag it along the red, kind of space it out, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I can put a third one, so they're all in line, right next to each other. I'm then going to go ahead, and I'm going to grab push-pull, and I'm going to push-pull this edge straight up 5.5 and hit enter. Now I need to do that two more times, so I'm going to go ahead and push pull, but this time rather than typing 5.5, I can just go to the end point of this other one, and it's going to make it exactly the same height. Notice how that's dashed, that's what I'm clicking on to raise it up, and I move it over. Now, one of your clock faces is going to be square, so we're going to leave it just like this. Another one is going to be angled, and another one is going to be round. So we're going to start with the angled one over here. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select the line command. And I'm going to draw over from the endpoint along the edge, 1 space 3 slash 8. And I'm going to hit enter. You'll notice I now have an endpoint right there. I'm going to do the same thing along this line. I'm going to go 1 space 3 slash 8 and hit enter. I'm going to do the same thing going down along the bottom. I'm going to type 1 space 3 slash 8, hit enter. One more time along this edge, going down 1 space 3 slash 8, hit enter. I now have an endpoint here that I'm going to click on and I'm going to draw up to this other endpoint, creating a little dash line or a little angled line. Do the same on the other side. So I now have two angles. To cut them out, all I'm going to do is go ahead and grab the push-pull command and push-pull back till it says offset limited to three quarters and click again and click again and it will just cut those pieces out. Now for the round clock, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab what is called the two-point arc. And I'm going to simply click on midpoint, come to the other midpoint, and then I'm going to go straight up to the top midpoint creating a half circle. Now once again, just like I did with my angles, I'm going to go push pull, offset limit to three quarters, offset limit to three quarters. So I now have my face and my choice of which clock face I want to build, but we're drawing all three and we're going to choose one in a moment. Once again, you would trade places and let your partner draw theirs. Now, once again, you have your clock faces and your clock base, and your partner should have taken their turn and drawn theirs, so you now have two drawings, each at the same point. Now, we have our face and we have our base. We now have to draw our technology holder, and this one's a little more tricky to draw. And so we're gonna kind of move to the right side, and you might wanna orbit around just so you'll see a little bit more of the surface. But we're gonna start by once again drawing a rectangle. The first rectangle we're going to draw is going to be off to the right and we're going to go ahead and go back to the right and we're going to type in 4.25 comma 0.75 and hit enter or return. Now we need to make another rectangle right behind it. So our rectangle behind it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to zoom in if we want a little bit. We're going to click on this end point we're going to go back to the right. This time we want to type in 1.5 comma 0.75. And so we should end up with a rectangle, same width, just going an inch and a half back. We're going to come back to this corner and we're going to type 1.5 comma 0.75 going off to the left and hit enter and so we end up with two rectangles behind this rectangle and they should be pretty even and I should have my midpoint right there in the middle which I do 
Now I have to do the exact same thing that I just did off of this endpoint. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to make a rectangle 1.5 comma 0.75 hit enter. Do the same thing on this corner. 1.5 comma 0.75 hit enter. So I have two identical rectangles, two identical rectangles. So I'm going to start with push pulling these back ones up and I'm going to start by selecting it, push pulling straight up and I'm going to go two space one slash eight and I'm going to hit enter. I'm then going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to go two space one slash eight and I'm going to hit enter. I now need to move these two front pieces up, these two middle pieces up, I should say. So I'm going to click on one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it up a total of 1.25. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do the same with the other one, but I'm just going to bring it up till it says endpoint. So I can type it again like I did on the back, or I can just make sure it's at the exact same height as the other one. Now, we have to move this front piece up, but it's going to tell us we can only move it so far. See how it won't let me go any farther than that first piece? This is what they call an offset limit. It's fine, go ahead and move it to this first corner, then grab it again and it will let you move it to the second corner. So we simply went from down low to this endpoint, clicked it again, moved it up to the upper endpoint. Now our power station, charging station, is almost ready to go. We're missing the top piece yet, so off to the side we're going to draw one more rectangle. So I'm going to draw this rectangle over here and I'm going to say, Click once, move it back to the right, and it's going to go ahead and be 4.25 comma 0.75. Now, once again, we're going to push pull this one and we're going to move it up what will be 1.25. So 1.25, hit enter. Now we need to move this on top of this. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and grab the arrow, grab just this piece, so make sure nothing else is blue but this piece. I'm then going to go ahead and say move, and I'm going to choose this endpoint right here. And I'm going to spin around using my scroll wheel, and I'm going to come in right here to that endpoint that I want to put it on top of. And I'm going to click. And I now have my charging station. My clock faces, and I can go ahead and hit zoom extents. Right, and I can spin around if I want a little bit. But so I have my charging station, my round clock face, my angled clock face, my square clock face to choose from. And we're going to work on putting this together on the template. But once again, you're going to trade places and your partner's going to draw theirs. You have a choice on whether you want this on the left, whether you want it on the right, whether you want this angled, whether you want a picture on here, picture on here, picture on here. There's all kinds of choices you got to make. I'm going to show you real quickly where you can find some examples of ones that have been made so you can kind of take a look at how do you want to decide to put your clock together. That earlier picture I showed you, they were all exactly the same and they're all set up pretty straight. Okay, so it's just simply glued straight in a row. I have the face kind of in the middle so it'd be sitting at the same level as the device holder, right? And this is just one example. To get to the examples, your instructor will have a folder. Right now, the one I'm going to show you, you should be able to find. You're going to go ahead and you're going to go to Tech Pickup under this PC when you open up the folder. So I can go to this PC and I can choose this Tech Pickup or this one right here. They go to the same spot. And I'm going to choose STEM 8 and I'm going to go to Clock Examples. And you're going to see if it's not large pictures like this, just simply go View. So if it looks like this or like this, right, just go to Extra Large Icons. And you can take a quick look at some examples. Now, we have a traditional straight clock here with the writing down below as well. We have two different colors of stain, and I'll explain that more as we go through the drawing. But you have what's called a natural and then what's a driftwood. They both look very nice on the clocks. Now, as I said, you have some examples. Here's a nice example of a Duke clock that has the writing on the front as the writing picture on the clock face. You also have an example 
of an angled one. Now both of these have their charging station off on the right. This one has the angled top though. You also have some examples of the charging station off to the left. And so this one's a nice straight one, has the writing down below, the picture, and your base. You have a nice example of a round clock that chose to do a very nice job on their picture on the front, and a nice job of their round clock base. So as you're looking at which one you want to build or how you want to draw it, you can see here's an example of one that did it on all three with their pictures, right? And so they have the charging station turned at an angle probably close to 30 degrees. Then they have the face sitting at about 15. They have the flute and the music symbols, and then they have their pictures off on here, and then their music notes down below, right? So you're going to see there's many different ideas you can look at, decide how do you want to think you want it start by placing it. It doesn't mean you're locked into it, but it just gives you an example of where and how you might want it. All right, another last one here. You have the angled Boba Fett, and then you have the charging station slightly behind it at a decent angle versus the Boba Fett straight. All right? It's going to be up to you how you decide you want that. But we're going to do our first example on your clock pieces. So we're going to start by moving the charging station. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over so I can see my base and my charging station. And I'm going to grab the mouse and the arrow, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select just the charging station. Now, once again, you might want to move so you can see a little more of the top, but I'm going to start by rotating it if I want to rotate it. Now, if I want to rotate it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose rotate and once again, remember when I talked about the red, the green, right? So you got green, red, and blue axis. Those are important. I'm going to come over to this right corner, and I'm going to make sure it's blue. So you see how that's blue? I'm going to go ahead and say endpoint on blue, and then I'm going to come a little bit out on the red, and I'm going to click a second time. Now when I start to rotate, you're going to see that angle come in. I would probably try to limit my angle to at max maybe 45 degrees, but I'd probably stick somewhere between 0 and 45. 45 would be the extreme that I would probably take it to. 30 might be a better angle. I'm going to go ahead and for my example, I'm going to make this one 20 degrees. And we'll say 25 degrees. See what that looks like. All right, and so I move it to 25 degrees. I'm then going to go ahead and say move from endpoint, and I'm going to come back to that same endpoint that I was on for rotate. And I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to come to my clock, and I'm going to put it on the base where it says on face. Now, you're going to want to decide. Do you want it centered? Do you want it front? You decide that. But what you want to make sure is that you're not hanging over that beveled edge. I'm going to come right up close to that beveled edge, and I'm going to click once. Now, before I click anywhere else, I can continue to move this without messing it up, as long as I just simply click an endpoint, drag it back on the face and on the green axis where I want it, Right, so if I wanted it a little closer to the back, I could then spin around, make sure I want it exactly where I want it. If you mess up, you would just simply come up and say edit, undo, move, and then go back to where you want it, or undo, rotate, etc. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it right there, and I'm going to work on moving my clock face. So I'm going to go ahead and do zoom extents, and I'm going to decide which clock face do I want. For this example, I'm going to say I want the angled clock face. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the arrow. I'm going to come in and grab the angled face only, so that's the only thing that's been highlighted. Now you're going to decide, do you want it straight? Do you want it at an opposite angle of the other one? How would you like that in there? I'm going to go ahead and angle it just like I did before. And I, once again, I'm going to come to this left corner this time. And I'm going to click endpoint on the blue, come a little bit on the red, click again. So I've clicked twice. I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to say 25 degrees again, just see what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and move it from that end point. And I'm going to say on face once again. So I come down here, I move it to where I think I would like it, close to that corner, but I'm not over my edge. I can spin around the back, kind of take a world view of it, make sure it looks okay. I think that looks pretty good. I'm then going to go ahead. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit by moving this face 
closer to this other face. So I'm going to go move from endpoint, come over to endpoint, move it a little bit away on the red axis. I then can grab both of them, zoom out a little bit, grab them both. And I can move from this endpoint, come down to my clock to the endpoint, move it over a little bit on the red. Hopefully there will say the red. All right, so I know I'm fairly centered on the red axis. All right, and I could go zoom extents. That way I know you've drawn both and then you've chosen how you want it set up. Once again, once one partner is done with this, the other partner would do the exact same thing for theirs. Now, you're gonna notice after you've got all that moved and your other partner has gone back and they've drawn theirs. So you'll see, I have an example of a little less of an angle and it's on the left. And I have an example of a little more of an angle and it's on the right. You're gonna decide how you want your clock all set up. Now our next step is going to be to paint our clocks. Then we're gonna decide how we would like to put our pictures on. But we're gonna start by painting them. To do that, you're gonna go ahead and come over here to the paint bucket. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna select the arrow and you're gonna choose wood. Now, as I said, we have two colors you can choose from. One is what's called a driftwood. The other one is more of a natural. Our natural is gonna look like the one that says wood floor. So I'm gonna make this clock the wood floor color. And all I'm gonna simply do is go around and I'm gonna paint it all the way around the whole thing the natural color you can go ahead and paint your other two faces as well so I orbit around making sure I'm not missing any pieces going to the bottom and I simply just paint the whole clock so I just go ahead and I paint the whole clock and once again, I'm going to turn, make sure I see all the pieces that I need to paint. Double check I got the bottom. Then I got to kind of zoom in to get this thing all painted. As I said, after you got it all done, you can close out the paint, do a world tour, make sure you got it all painted. There's a spot I missed. All right. But you're going to go ahead and get it all painted in natural or whatever color you're going to use. Then we'll go back and we will get working on our pictures. But once again, you're going to trade the mouse and the computer and let your partner paint theirs. Now, if you were wanting to paint with the driftwood, as I said, we have the natural wood floor is the natural color or close to what would be the natural color. If we want to paint in the driftwood color, you're going to choose the wood lumber. So if you want more of the driftwood color, for your example, you would choose the wood lumber. An example of that color is seen in my partners who's painted theirs, right? So Billy Bob has the driftwood. I have the natural. And once again, you can do zoom extents. All right, so you got natural, driftwood, if you want to kind of see the two different colors, what they would kind of look like when it's all said and done. I'm going to go back and we're going to work on showing you how to put your pictures in. Once you've got yours painted and your partner's has theirs painted, you're going to work on finding pictures that you would want for your clock. Now, you're only required to have one, but some people want to have more. The one you're required for is your clock face. So that would be what you're going to put on this part. Okay. You can have the option if you want to write something or draw something down here as well. That is fine. You can also draw or write something here as well. You could also do something along here. I will tell you if you do the top, your device is going to tend to hide this part, but this part, this part, and this part you will see the whole time. Now for my first clock, right here that says first and last name, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a Liberty Eagle clock. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the E and I'm going to go look for some images. And I'm going to start by going to Liberty. And I should have, if I type it right, I have the one right here. This is the one for our school's website. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to steal this eagle that we have right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, save picture as. 
Now this is important. Right here you see how this says PNG bitmap. Your picture in order to use it in SketchUp needs to be a PNG, JPEG, bitmap, one of those. Okay, And you'll see in a moment why. A GIF, I believe, is one that will not work. And so if your picture is not showing up, it's probably because it's saving it as a GIF rather than a PNG, JPEG, or bitmap. Those would be my three preferred pictures. Now you can give it a name. You can leave it as it is. I would probably give it a name that's what it is and possibly your initials so you know which one is yours in case somebody else would have one. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it Liberty Eagle. And I'm going to save this in the tech drop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to tech drop under this PC and I'm going to go to period four, the class I'm in or whatever period you're in, and I'm going to go to whatever rotation you're in, and you're going to see one that says clock pictures. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it Liberty Eagles, Eagle, and then I'm going to put first initial, last initial, right? And I'm going to hit save. Now, if I go back to my SketchUp clock, I'm going to put that eagle right here on the face. So to do that, I'm going to go file, import. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to tech drop. Once again, I can do that under this PC, tech drop, the class period that you saved it to, the rotation you saved it to, and then clock pictures. And I'm going to, and I'm going to say open. I'm then going to come down and I'm going to decide where do I want this picture to be? Do I want it to take up the whole thing? You'll notice right now my wings are going over it, but I just made it nice and big right now just so I can decide where do I want it. I'm then going to come over here to the left and I'm going to choose scale. And I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I'm going to move it down a little bit so it's not coming off the edges. And sometimes when you stretch a picture it might look a little funky. If it looks a little funky you can always revert it back and try it again. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to put mine, I think, right about here, like such. And then if I like where it's at, I think it looks pretty good. I can click off to the side and then there would be my eagle sitting right there in the center of my clock. Now, we will have a clock face and I know it shows up over here on my one I showed you the example. I'm not going to make you draw the hands and the dial right now. But you will end up having a clock dial that will go in there. For our example purposes, we're just going to simply put the picture on. Now, I'm going to add pictures here and here just to show you if you decide you want them, how they look, and where to go. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to search for another picture. And this time I'm going to search for Liberty, the word, and I'm going to say images. All right, and it should bring up me bring up pictures of the word Liberty. Now, my preference when you're looking for pictures would be that you have pictures with a white background, just because we are eventually going to print these to put on our clock, and I'll be shown in another step later on. But when we go to look for those pictures, it's a lot easier if they have a white background, because then we're not wasting a bunch of ink and everything else that we need. But you can scroll down looking to see if you like one. If you can't find one, your instructor could try to help you with what you're looking for. Now this one's pretty cool with the eagle and the liberty and then it says flames. That might not be something bad where I could take that picture and when I actually go to do it, I could get rid of the flames. All right, so right now I think I'm gonna try this one. So I'm gonna go save picture as. All right, and I could do JPEG. I can also click on that picture because sometimes it gives you a bigger picture or a bigger version. But I could then go ahead and say save picture as. And you'll notice this time it says it's a JPEG. That one will still work. But I'm just going to go ahead and call it Liberty. I'm going to put my FL for my first and last initials. And I'm going to hit make sure it's in the clock rotation. So I click the arrow and I can see it's in period four, rotation four, the same one I was in. You would put it in the one that belongs for yours. And I'm going to hit save. Go back to my SketchUp drawing, and I'm going to import that picture, and I think I'm going to put my picture right here on this little face. So I'm going to go File, Import, and I'm going to choose Liberty FL, and I'm going to say Open. 
and I'm going to put it right down here on this bottom corner and then I'm going to drag it up to this top edge. Now, I know it's not the same color and it's fine that it has the white. Sometimes your pictures will be translucent, sometimes they won't be. But I'm going to change the scale once again and I'm going to stretch this all the way across. Now I know I would take out the flame part, right? But I got a Liberty Eagle here, I got an Eagle here, right? And maybe I want to add one more thing to the base. So I would go back looking for what I want to add, and this time I'm going to go ahead and I just want to add in the numbers 20, 16, dash 17. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to go to images. And I'm going to look to see if there's a logo that's 2016, 17 for this school year that I like. And so I'm going to go ahead and I go down and I like this one right here where it's kind of fading it off. So I'm going to click on it. And once again, I would go ahead and say, save picture as. Make sure I'm in the right location once again. So, yep, I'm in period four, rotation four. This time I'm going to call it 2017-16 or whatever it would be. And I'm going to put my first and last initial again. And I'm going to hit save, making sure it's a JPEG. Yep, it'll work. Now, sometimes a picture like this one might be too square and my flames would be another situation where maybe I want to make it a little bigger. One of the things you can do, I could go in and I could go open that picture up. So for example, actually I'm going to put it on here and I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. So if I go file, import, and I go get that new picture that I just saved, and I grab that picture, I go to put it in here, it's pretty square, and you see how it's not sitting quite right on my picture, and it's kind of way back there. And if I move it forward, it's going to be all kinds of funky on my clock. So I might have to do what is called cropping that picture. And to do that, I have to actually go to the file. So I'm going to come over here to the tech drop. I'm going to go to the period that I saved it in, the rotation I saved it in, and I'm going to go to clock pictures. I'm going to find that picture, and I could do the same thing for the eagle if I wanted, but I click up here to edit, and I could choose to crop, right? And so I could come back in here, and I could say, well, I want this just to go right down to that two, All right? Then I could do the same thing over here, coming over to the seven. Then I could also do the same thing coming down to the top, and I could crop that picture. When I'm done, I just have to hit save. I then could go File, Import, now that I have my edited 2016-17. I could go Open. I could come in, put it along that edge, take it to where I want it. All right? I could stretch it out. Maybe I want that going kind of the edge, kind of coming up towards that bottom. Snapping it right there on that edge, but then maybe that's where I want my picture to look. All right, so it says 2017, 16 down below. So I know what year I made it. I got my picture over here. I got my picture over here. I then would go ahead and kind of zoom so I can see them both. And I would have my pictures ready to go. I would then would trade places with my partner and let them do the same for their pictures. So once your pictures are done, now once you have your pictures for you and your partner, and just to show you an example, right? Your partner may have drawn pictures and I have SpongeBob for Billy Bob here. And notice how it's a round clock, but yeah, it goes over. If I click on this image, right, and I click on the scale, you'll see the scale is taken to the top. You can stretch it and it's fine. I know you can't see right behind it, but that's okay. You just want to get an eyeball, eyeball of what you're thinking for your pictures. So it's okay if something like this would happen where it's slightly above it, okay? But that way we can see I got my SpongeBob and SpongeBob's house, and then there's nothing down on the bottom. But once again, you only need a picture on this part right here. Now, sometimes if you have a smaller picture, right, you would scale it in and I could even look to see, you know, if I didn't want to have that going out past there, I could come in and I could have his house where it's coming down to the edge, right, and taking up less space. 
But so if you want it, it's fine for your reference if you want the full height, right? But I could show that I have SpongeBob laying outside his house, right, for his design. But so you're going to go ahead and once you both have their pictures on, you need to dimension this. And all you're going to do is come over here, go to dimensions, click endpoint, endpoint, go down. So we see it's five and a half, endpoint, endpoint, should be 12. We're going to do the same thing for our height. Coming across should be about five and a half. We can kind of arrow around a bit, orbit around, I should say. Zoom extents. I'm going to come over. I'm going to measure this height over here. Should be about three and three eighths. Do a quick dimension on the front edge. But so I should have my dimensions on the side, my dimensions on the top front. And we can kind of orbit around, and if you need to move any of these, you can come in and move them a bit so that they're legible. Okay? And if this one's not quite showing up, you can move it down. But you're going to go ahead and you're going to dimension the whole thing. Hit zoom extents, make sure they're still showing pretty good. You're then going to go ahead and click leader. Click on this point. And you're going to come in and you're going to type first, last, name, period, number, whatever class number you are, and you're going to hit save. Your partner would then do the same on theirs when you both have yours dimensioned and labeled as you see. You're going to go ahead and you're going to go file, print. Make sure you have the tech ed printer selected. You're going to hit OK and you'll print handing that into your instructor and that will be your cue to get your lumber to start building your clock in the production labs. So once you have yours drawn, your picture's all in place, yours dimensioned and your partner's dimensioned, you will both turn those in after printing them and your instructor will give you your lumber to start building.